Hello everybody, welcome back to Perfect English with Alex. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use five modal verbs. I did a video before about using five other modal verbs, so if you want to watch that, you can click the link here. But if you want to learn these new ones, then let's go with this video. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to use five modal verbs. Have to, might, will, used to, and shall. Let's go with how to use them now. So first of all, let's start with have to. Have to is used to show an obligation, something that you need to do. You have to do it, 100%. It is not an option not to do it. And it's very similar to must. You must, you have to. But must is more formal, have to is more informal. So have to is used more with friends, must is used more with laws and legal documents. You have to drive on the left-hand side of the road in England. It's an obligation. You need to follow this obligation. You have to do it. And have to is always followed by an infinitive verb. So do not conjugate any verbs after have to. So have to go, have to run, have to drive. Always the infinitive form. So some more examples of have to. You have to be 18 to drink alcohol in England. We have to stay inside during the national lockdown. I have to see my mum tomorrow. All of these are obligations, things that have to do, 100%. And one thing to remember that when the subject is he, she or it, it's not have to, it's has to. He has to, she has to, it has to. She has to be at the airport two hours before she flies, not she have to be. He has to eat every two hours on this medication, not he have to. It has to stop raining at some point, not it have to. So, some golden rules about using have to. One, it shows an obligation, something that you need to do 100%. It is not an option to not do it. Two, have to always has an infinitive verb after. So don't conjugate any verbs. I have to played? No. I have to play. And when we are talking in the third person, he, she, it, it's not have to, it's has to. And it's less formal than must, but it means the same thing. So must is more formal, have to is more informal. Okay, next, let's take a look at using might. Might expresses a probability. This means it is used to say something that we don't know is true or we don't know is false. A possibility. Maybe it's true, maybe it isn't. She might be in the living room. She might be in the living room. So in this sentence, I don't know where she is. It's a possibility she's in the living room. Maybe it's true, maybe it's false. She might be in the living room. Maybe she is, maybe she isn't. So I'm using might. And may can also be used in this example too. May and might generally are interchangeable. She may be in the living room. And just like have to, might always needs an infinitive verb after. Might be. Not might is, not might am, might be. She might be in the living room. So here are a few more examples of using might. It might rain tomorrow. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. It might. She might be in London on that day. We might have moved house by then. I might have an early dinner tonight. All of these are things that aren't true, they're not false, we think maybe they're true, but we aren't sure, so we're using might. 
So golden rules of using might. Might expresses a probability or possibility. Something that maybe is true, but maybe it isn't. It can be swapped and used with the word may. So may and might mean the same thing. And it always needs an infinitive verb after. Might be, might rain, might go. So always an infinitive verb. Don't conjugate anything. Okay, so that covers have to and might. Now let's look at will. And will has three main uses. So let's go through all three of the uses. First, will talks about the future, things that are yet to happen, the future. I will go to my mum's house on Friday. Friday is in the future, so it's a future event. I will go on Friday. And this future tense use is the most common way to use will in English. So will is mostly used with the future tense. We will have dinner at eight o'clock in the future. She will be 30 in a few years. It will be very hot next month. All of these are things that are yet to happen. They are in the future, so use will. And will can also be used to make predictions, something that we think will happen. And in this case, will is used with words like think and sure. So when we are making predictions, I think it will. I'm sure it will. I think it will snow in January. I am sure he will be successful when he is older. She thinks she will have four children. All of these are making predictions about the future, something we think about the future. So use will. I think it will rain tomorrow. And the third way to use will is to make decisions. I will have the steak, please. This is used a lot in restaurants and bars when we're ordering food and drinks. I will have the steak, please. And some other times it could be used. I will pay for this. I'm making the decision. I will pay for this. I will have a coffee, please. I'm making the decision to have a coffee. We will give you 10 pounds for Christmas. I'm making the decision to give you the money. So there are three main uses of will. A future statement, a future prediction, or a decision. And like with the previous words, remember will needs an infinitive verb. I will go, I will eat, he will swim. Always the infinitive verb after. Remember, if you're enjoying this video, like and subscribe, please. Thank you so much. Okay, modal verb number four, used to. Used to talks about something that happened in the past but does not happen now. Something that was done in the past but is not now. So it can be a state, like a location. I used to live in London. Or it can be a habit, something you did. I used to swim when I was younger. So a location or a state and a habit. Both of these examples can use used to. If it's something that happened before but does not happen now. For example, he used to dance as a child. They used to go on holiday every year. We used to live in France. All of these are talking about things that happened in the past but don't happen now. So used to. And like with the other words, the golden rule of used to, always use an infinitive verb. Used to go, used to have, used to swim. Always an infinitive verb. So don't say used to went. No, it's not an infinitive verb. Always the infinitive form with used to. Okay, and your fifth modal verb of this video, shall. This word is not used so much in modern English, but you might still hear it if you speak to an elderly person. For example, my girlfriend's grandma says shall, but younger people don't say shall. But it has two main uses to make suggestions. Shall we get a pizza tonight? So here, shall is making a suggestion and asking, do you think we should get pizza tonight? 
Shall we get pizza tonight? So if you want to make a suggestion, you can use shall. Shall we go to the cinema later? Shall we go and pick up my mum? Three suggestions here, three uses of shall to make suggestions. And shall can also be used in the same way as will for the future tense. So anything we are talking about in the future, we can use shall. And this is where it's different. An elderly person would probably use shall, but younger people will use will. So I shall go to the cinema later or I will go to the cinema later. Both sentences are okay, but an elderly person would say shall, and a younger person would probably say will. So shall can be used to make suggestions and to talk about things in the future. Two examples of using shall there. So there you have the five modal verbs and how to use them. In this video, I went through have to, might, will, used to, and shall. I hope you learned how to use these new words in this video. And if you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like and a comment for this week's homework. Your homework for this week, I want you to take one of these modal verbs and make a sentence using them. So one sentence using one of these words and leave it as a comment on the video. Thank you all so much. Look forward to reading your homework. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye. See you.